All right, guys, is, is this investigation continues to unfold, right? And this investigation is going to lead us wherever the facts take us. I have no horse in this race. And I'm talking about Antonio McKee versus John Smith. I am purely curious. Now, I would encourage all of you, do not mess with a Smith. I would encourage you that. It's your life. Do what you want with it. I for sure am right in telling you that your life is likely to be different if you exalt one of the wives of the Smith family. This is just fair warning. I have upset Lisa Smith, Leroy's better half, and I told Aaron Simpson I am going to give a public apology. And as we start to look into what did happen between Antonio and to John Smith, and I'm, I'm going to hang on to a few things. But there are facts and details that are coming out. There is a tape that is emerging that is allegedly going to be overnighted to me. We'll see where that goes with these mystery tapes. Those have a weird way of disappearing or have never having occurred in the first place. But something happened. Those two know each other. Those two touched. Those two wrestled. Was it a practice match? If so, we're all done. We are done. Nothing to talk about. Were they in singlets? Was there a referee? Was there a clock? Was there a weigh-in or an alleged weigh-in ahead of time? If any one of those things are missing, we are all done talking here. We will not bring this up and we will not go any further. But there is now witnesses who are coming forward saying this happened. We are working on those stories of what this is, of what that was. And when I brought this story up originally, I'm telling you guys, and I'm as good as the information that I've been given, I am bringing you that information. But I'm telling you as clear and as plainly as I know how to speak, I don't know if any of it's right. None. I don't know if any of it's right. That is why an investigation is taking place. I said in the earlier piece last week, this is my apology. Let me get back to the apology to Miss Lisa. I said, as a part of this story, after the encounter between John and Antonio took place, that representatives of USAW at the direction of Leroy's father, who is John's father, who is the father-in-law of Miss Lisa, demanded that Antonio McKee get back on the scale. When he did, they didn't like it and demanded that that be wiped. That didn't happen. Not only did that not happen, I never, I told you this was the story. I was very light on it. I mean, I got to defend myself here. I did not mean to upset Mrs. Smith. But I was very clear to tell you this is just a story and I'm just repeating it. Now, as details have emerged, old man wasn't even there. That absolutely did not happen. We can clear that up. He was not present. The Smith that was present, according to the story, is Pat. I do not have Pat's side on it. I don't know Pat Smith, but I admire Pat Smith. I was the class under Pat. So when Pat's out there winning one, two, three, four, this is what I'm dreaming to do. And every wrestler from that age, same age group can tell you that. I'm not looking to upset Pat, but this is the witness. He was named. He was named as being there. Witnesses that were there couldn't even identify what Pat was wearing. That's a pretty damn good witness for 33 years later. That is not the topic. The topic is simply, was there a match? Yes or no? Now, it turns out that Antonio McKee was a little better than everyone knows. And you don't have a real story here, right? A guy goes and beats Jordan. I go, we all would have heard about that. Guy goes and beats John Smith. Ah, come on, we all would have heard about that. You don't really have a story here except for who it's coming from, which is Antonio McKee. Antonio McKee is clouded in success. I cannot begin to read half of the resume of Antonio for you because it's so deep. Everything he touches turns to gold. This is not a guy who needs a claim. But the only thing that you get in wrestling, and this John Smith and the whole Smith family will be able to agree with, the only thing you get is a little bit of credit amongst our very small community. And if there is a credit here to be given that has been taken back, then 33 years later, we're going to make sure that he gets it. The end. If we cannot prove, if we do not have footage, if we do not have appropriate witnesses, we'll throw the whole thing out. I'm just sharing with you, Antonio McKee, two months later, Tony was not a big freestyle wrestler. And he ends up in this thing, whatever this, this, this was, with Smith. Two months later, his coach enters him at the U.S. Open. Antonio makes the semifinals, beating Steiner the night before in the quarters. 
Antonio doesn't make weight. He's supposed to take on Nate Carr. He doesn't make weight for the semis, and he, he has to default out. So this is a player. This is a guy with some real skills that the nation did not know of. He was a street guy. He kept to himself. He was wildly talented. He went on through the pros, and now he's over in coach. I mean, his own son is going to fight in the main event on Showtime on Friday night. This is not a guy who needs a claim. This was one of the top coaches in the country. He worked with the Valencia boys. He trained Aaron Pico. He showed the Valencia boys and Aaron Pico, John Smith's low single and his 2D high crotch. He's a believer in John Smith. He just said, look, in this minute, whatever happened, it happened, but I won. That's a, that's a big deal. It's a very big deal. Not to mention if our community covered it up, that is unlike anything wrestling would ever do. Wrestling has its rules. What happened in the practice room stays in the practice room. That's one of the rules. But whatever happened in competition, it does not matter if it was a kid's meet. It doesn't matter if you want to call it an exhibition. You guys have gotten lost on that words exhibition, by the way. Well, it was an exhibition. He wasn't taking a... No, no, no. Don't, don't get lost between an exhibition and, and a challenge match. Exhibitions can absolutely be legitimate matches if they were sanctioned by the governing body. If a sanctioned referee held it with two sanctioned athletes, which just means they got a USAW card. They go out there and they slap hands and they go at it. The referee raises a hand. You just had a match. If anything absent of that happened, you did not have a match. That is part of where this investigation will go. We're going to find out what happened. And there are a number of witnesses still coming forward, but there's a number of very credible witnesses that had never even heard of this. And guys, that's got to be relevant to this. I have not heard from Pat Smith. I need to hear from Pat Smith. The fact that I can't get a hold of Pat Smith is evidence in of itself. It's circumstantial at best. Why, why is he being quiet? It's a fair question by me. All I'm, all I'm here doing is asking questions. I'm not answering them. I don't have the answers yet. Why can't I get a hold of Pat Smith? Why won't he talk about this? Why did Pat Smith put Antonio McKee on the scale after this happened? And moreover, did he? Pat's got the right to say no. But you're never going to have a debate. And this is where I think we're probably going to have to have a trial. Now, John Smith will be afforded representation. If he does not elect to afford representation, representation will be provided for him. Antonio McKee will have representation, who he has already said he would like to represent himself. This will be adjudicated by yours truly, and it will be put to a jury. We are going to decide if there was a match or not. But you are never going to have a group of people that say, yes, it happened, I saw it. We have those people right now. They're very small, but they do exist and they're very credible. But you're not going to have a group of people that are saying it did happen versus a group of people that said it didn't. You can't say, I, yes, I saw it and it didn't happen. And I've had somebody get a hold of me claiming to be speaking for Pat Smith. I have not spoke to Pat. But I did speak to a guy from Dell City who claimed that Pat sent me a message through him. And that that message was something along the lines, I saw it and did it happen? That, that can't be the case. You'd have to be like Dennis Delito. Say, man, I've never heard about this. I called Coach George, Joe Corso, who lost his mind. I had to calm him down. He was so upset that this claim is taking place. And Coach Corso was the head coach of the Sunkiss Kids who John Smith represented. He took it as a personal offense. I went to Mark Perry. Now, Mark Perry Sr. has the ability to close the book on this topic because he is the single most respected mind for wrestling trivia in the United States of America. He's family. He's married to John Smith's sister. He coached John Smith, and he coached with John Smith. But old man Perry knows everything there is to know about wrestling. If you're ever trying to recruit a kid, you got a kid from Kansas that he entered Fargo, but you didn't make it out to Fargo, and he was out on the first day, even though they thought that they would do better. You could call Perry, and he'll tell you about that kid. He'll tell you what his parents' names are. He'll tell you how he did in the cadets. He'll tell you how he did in the regional tournament when he was 11 and 12 years old. Perry knows everything there is about wrestling. I mean, it's mind-boggling. Not to mention this is a family member, not to mention this is a coach. He said, man, I've never heard of this. And he told me the story the same as I could have told you, which is if you want to go all the way back to 88, John dropped a, a match to Randy. You want to fast forward to the Cuban. We ran into him a couple of times, once in Cuba, in a match that nobody's ever seen, but John says that it happened. Okay, great. Sure that it did. Ran into the Cuban again in the Olympic Games, came back through what was called a round robin, grabbed the gold medal, and put the Cuban lower down on the stand. 
and prior to getting to those games in Barcelona, ran into the best of three with John Fisher, came up short in one, came back, won the next two. Leroy Cuban Fisher. Same way the story's always been told to all of us. I do not know how much I believe that a match could take place. If John Smith does something, we know. Wrestlers, we got pictures of John Smith on our wall. We got stacks of John Smith. How low can you go? Tapes. This is John Smith. But John Smith, I'll tell you one thing about him. He wouldn't lie. John Smith will not lie. John Smith gets asked about this and proclaims it was not a match. We go to trial. John Smith says, I never even met the son of a bitch. Or if John Smith said we wrestle and I beat him, or if he says he wrestled and I beat me, when John Smith finally answers this question, you will have the right answer. I promise you that. Smith would not take this from somebody. No way. Uh-uh. He might avoid it. He might not want to talk about it. There might be something there. But when we finally get to Coach Smith, when he, when and if he answers the question, he's going to answer the question truthfully. Nobody's disputing that. Antonio McKee is not disputing that. Nobody is. But getting Coach Smith to talk could be a little harder to do. I can't get a hold of Pat. Harry Sr. never heard about it, and he was the coach. He didn't happen to be on this particular trip, but he would have known. That's fair. He would. That's true. This would be a colossal secret to keep. You can telephone, telegraph, or tell a wrestler. The word's getting out. 1989 was different. Allegedly, there's a video. That video has a finder's fee of $10,000, by the way. If you're sitting on that video and you must have completion, don't show me walking out there. I need completion of the match. I need to see the final whistle come and I need to see what the referee does. You don't have that, the 10 grand, it's the deal's off. You do have that. Done. We're going to get to the bottom of this. I owe Miss Lisa Smith an apology. I hope that Leroy accepts my apology. No disrespect, Matt. The piece of the story that said Smith Sr. was there is false. It is admitted false, and I misspoke. For that, I apologize. 